Connecting sensors to a Click PLC is easy. In this video, we'll connect three different types of photosensors, diffuse, retroflective, and through beam, three proximity sensors, and an ultrasonic sensor to the Click PLC. Here's what it looks like on a test rack. Here's the Click PLC, and here's the three inductive proximity sensors, the ultrasonic sensor, and the through beam, diffuse, and retroflective photo optic sensors. First we'll connect the proximity and ultrasonic sensors, then we'll swap those out with the photo sensors. The Click has a power supply, the CPU, and an 8 input discrete module. Two of the proximity sensors are intentionally NPN and the other proximity sensor and the ultrasonic sensor are PMP, just so you can see how to connect the different sensor types to your controller. Since we have both types of sensors, we need to make sure the PLC input module can handle both NPN and PMP. This click input module has two commons. That's perfect because we can simply connect one common to the positive voltage rail so the NPN sensors can pull the I.O. terminal low when they activate. And we'll connect the other common to the negative rail so the PMP sensor can pull the I.O. pin on the PLC up when it goes active. And that's really all you need to remember. When you have an NPN sensor which syncs current, you need an input module that can source the current. When you have a PMP sensor that sources the current, you need an input module that can sync the current. And since this click input module handles both, we're in good shape. Automation Direct sensors have a diagram on the sensor or sometimes on the wire showing exactly how to wire the sensor. This little box is the sensor's load, which is the PLC. And for this sensor, we see that the PLC provides or sources current from the positive rail to the input of the sensor. So we know that without even looking at the part number that this must be an MPN sensor to sync that sourced current. So all we have to do is connect the two MPN sensors to this block of the I.O. with the positive common and connect the two PMP sensors to this terminal block with the grounded common. Perfect. If we bring up the Click software and connect to the PLC, we can instantly see the results in the data view. When I pass metal in front of the inductive proximity sensors, we see the result. And when I wave my hand in front of the ultrasonic sensor, we see that result. Notice that even though the MPN sensors are pulling the input terminal low and the PMPs are pulling it high, none of that matters here. All we see in the data view is the sensor's active. Once the sensor is properly wired, you don't have to worry about whether the signal is high or low. To use that in your ladder code, you just bring the inputs in like you would any other contact. The MPN sensors are at address X101 and 102 and the PMPs are at X105 and 106. Could we have used the inputs that are right on the click module and saved the expense of an additional input module? Sure. This particular click has two commons, so we could have done it the exact same way, except now the sensors would come in at different addresses. We handle the optical sensors exactly the same way. We have a through beam, diffuse, and retroflective sensor, but all we really care about is are the NPN or PMP. The through beam is NPN, and the other two are PMP. So we'll connect the MPN sensor to the I.O. block with the positive common and the PMP sensors to the I.O. block with the negative or grounded common. I replaced the other sensors with these so when we bring up the data view we get the exact same result. Mechanical switches can be connected as either syncing or sourcing. AC proximity sensors can also be used for syncing or sourcing. Just make sure you have an input card that can handle the AC voltage. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact AutomationDirect's free, award-winning tech support during regular business hours. They'll be happy to help. And don't forget the forums. There are lots of folks there that love to share their years of experience. Just don't post any tech support questions there. AutomationDirect support staff doesn't monitor the forums on a regular basis.